The best weapon in Terraria is not the Zenith, it's not the last prism, it's none of these things. The best weapon in Terraria is you. We have been sold lies, guys. We rely on these, these weapons because we ourselves are shit. Guys, let me know if this sounds familiar. You, you create a new world, you pick a side to go, and you start walking in a straight line, you start exploring. But eventually, you come across your corruption or crimson, and you're met with these motherfuckers. So it's time to turn around, right? It's, you gotta, you give up? Well, no, guys, there are holes in the Terraria AI. Let me, let me teach you. This is gonna blow your guys' mind. Just, just watch this. Where are you going? You're lost. Start with your headset, so free. It's that easy. You don't need to rely on your weapons, okay? So basically, I'm gonna be taking the ankles of every mob in Terraria. And not only that, but I'm gonna show you useful tricks that can help you out in all stages of the game. So we'll start with these guys right here, the face monsters. So unfortunately, these guys are pretty hard to beat right off the bat with no weapons. But the little trick is, if you're below them, they will always jump to attack. That's then right here, you can see I'm below him, so he's gonna jump when he attacks me. And just, you let him go right over you. Let's try it again. This is a little ledge, I'm gonna stand a little bit back, just a couple blocks, and he will jump over me every time. Try it again. Yup. Also with these guys, you could literally just jump right over them and they do not care. They just don't care for, for whatever reason. They don't. But for some reason, we all choose to do this and we, we get ourselves killed. Spider's just like the face monster where you could literally jump over it perfectly fine. And it does not care at all. Yeah, the spider will actually jump directly over you if you're below it, just like the uh, face monster. However, with these guys, if there's a background wall, it'll always climb onto it. Another thing about the spiders is you can literally disable them by forcing them onto a wall and putting a block in front of them. That's all it takes. All you need is some space for them to, to crawl, you place one block, and it instantly just disables them. And you could box them up if you need. Stop moving, buddy. There we go. If you're real skilled, you just set this up really quick. Play some of those. One of these. Boom. Disabled. And let's actually see what happens when more spiders come. I haven't seen this. I mean, I assume they they just get trapped. There you go. You set you set two of these up on either side. Just three out, two high, and you're basically invincible from them. Of course, if there's already a background, this trick works perfectly. But not these guys. These guys are uh, a little more of a problem. So with the little soul eaters, I'm not gonna lie, it is a lot harder and they're a lot more unpredictable. However, there is like a base type of strategy you can follow to beat these guys. So they always swoop in and once they hit something, they bounce away and they try to swoop in again, right? So with these guys, you can always just set up a T which will stop them. They will usually get stuck or they will bounce off of it. Eventually they end up here though, where you can kind of just Hurry up, bitch. Where you can then box them in, but that takes a long time. What I recommend for these guys is to literally just jump right over them. But you have to make sure that they're not bouncing off the ground when it happens. That only works when they're coming from the side, honestly. When they're coming from above, the best thing to do is to set up the T. Um, you can also just dig three blocks in the ground and they can't get you. It's a lot less of a cheat code, more just of a dodge, but you know. Yeah, but now you should be able to kind of master the crimson a little bit better. You know, go ahead and elevate these dudes, make them jump over you. Get your little spider buddy, trap them, all that stuff. This time you got these weird dudes on you, just jump right over them. Let's say you can't jump this guy for whatever reason. If you just place a block, he's always going to bounce off of it. And you could just kind of play off that. Run at this dude and keep placing blocks, bro. He got no other option but to back up. On the topic of blocks, what people don't realize is that you can place blocks on background walls, right? See, everyone knew this, but people don't take advantage of this, guys. Let me tell you, you put your cursor below your feet as you jump. You literally place everything below you. And you can just basically fly now, bro. You don't need wings, bro. Like, you have wings in the beginning of the game, bro. The second you start. If you're running forward, you might want to aim a little bit ahead of you. Because that's just like, because you might, you know, miss it. So, you know, when this is really useful during the corruption in early game okay people usually get to this point and they're like damn man i gotta bridge over and then they, they start bridging and they die you don't even need platforms bro you could literally you see jump this dude boom well yeah you just gotta make sure you don't suck though it's just easy bro and you can even go down too without taking any fall damage uh i don't know whose grave that is you don't use this you need to start using this all you need is a few pieces of dirt and you're basically, you have wings. Also, while I'm here, I should probably mention, the Soul Eaters are actually just like the uh, the Crimson version. Their AI is exactly the same. So you can just jump over them. How the fuck did he not die? All right, next I'm going to be covering Nighttime, where all the goobly goblies come out and try to kill you. <laughs> Guys, let me know if this sounds familiar. You're exploring your cave, grabbing your loot, and that's when you die. 
only to realize it's now nighttime and you have no form of shelter, you got no house, and it's just you and your boy, the guide, Jack. Now you gotta survive the goobly goblies before you get eaten up. Jack, no. Well, I'm gonna show you how to deal with these guys. Jack, please, please refrain from attacking them while I try to demonstrate, please. Come on, bunny. Bunny, get out of there, man. Don't stop. You can make it. Oh. So much like the other mobs in the crimson, the zombies will jump over you if they're elevated. Play on any version that isn't classic mode. When you try to jump over zombies, they always jump to block you. Same with face monsters or anything like that. It seems pretty impossible to get past them on your first day. However, you could use, you know, the elevation trick. But there's another one that's a lot more impressive and flashy you could show off. For this trick, you gotta, you gotta tap the jump button and go under. Quick, tap, under. Yeah, and you never want to do this trick when they're below you. Because it's just a lot more difficult to get under that space. Let's try this again. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, it's not that convenient. But if you don't have like any blocks or there's no uh, there's no elevation, it uh, it definitely works well. I mean, this by far is my favorite trick. It's like the most flashy and skillful looking trick, bro. It's like your opponent is playing checkers and you're playing chess. You are faking this dude out and snapping his ankles as you go underneath him. It's a classic, it's clean. It's gotta be a top three move on my board right here. And while on the topic of this, there's actually different jumping heights. If you didn't know, like I'm assuming most of you know, if I tap the jump, I go to about there. If I hold it, I just go right up. Also, it's important to note that uh, the player actually jumps one block higher than zombies do. No, they don't. Bro, they changed that. I swear they changed that. All right, whatever, guys. All right, anyways, a nice little trick you can do is just literally build up, place one block here. Okay, I don't know what's up with this zombie. Place one block there, and zombies can't get up. They get trapped. So when you're making the ugly little houses, just make sure there's blocks on the ends, just so mobs aren't jumping up and killing you. Hey, but if you suck at juking, there is no need. Because I'm going to show you another trick. Trees, guys. Trees. Look at that. It's that simple. Let me break this down for you. So you are not able to place blocks on trees at all anywhere. However, platforms you could place on the sides of trees. Or where these little branches are, you could always place them right above there. So if you find yourself in a little pickle, just aim right below your feet, jump up, and place them. But uh, be careful, because zombies could also use these platforms if they're uh, smart enough. But yeah, now we're going to cover the demon eye. One of the most annoying starting mobs in the game. They seem to have a very random AI that's unpredictable. But these guys are like any other mob. They ain't special. I'm gonna teach you how to take its ankles. The key to beating demon eyes is what I like to call the turnaround method. You just hit a quick turnaround and they can't get you. I'll even uh, speed it up here. You can just infinitely do this and they can basically just never touch you. If you got too much time on your hands, you can always try the rope method. Just keep moving up and down and they travel in eight formations. So you're basically just invincible there. Let's move on to the next place where you might find some problems when starting a new world. Now, if you wander off to the side of your world and you're not instantly met with crimson or corruption, you're likely to find the desert. And inside of it, a mob even more annoying than Soul Eaters and their crimson variants, bro. Vulture's gotta be the worst mob to ever be added in the game, okay? Hey, stop! So what do you do early game when you get in a way of fighting back? Well, I'm gonna teach you. Because this is probably the most broken trick there is. You guys are gonna be so mad once you see how easy it is. The trick to completely disable vultures and have them completely stop attacking you is to spam jump. That is the glitch in their AI. You just spam jump and they won't even attempt to attack you. This literally makes no sense at all, but it's just one of those one of those features, man. A loophole in Terraria. The countless days of being mauled by vultures are over and you can move along with your day. Just make sure when you turn around that they're at their highest state. Because if they're down here when you turn around, they will hit you. This move got to go in my top five. Not gonna lie. That's a top five move for me. Now for antelions, as long as you're at least one block below them, they can't shoot you. So you just walk right up to them and uh, you can box them up if you want. I just kind of leave them there. I just let them be, honestly. And now the desert swarmer is literally just the recycled vulture AI. So if you have enough space, just spam jump and move left and right. And they can't get you. Those devs getting lazy, man. Like... Let me tell you. Now, it's important to understand your greatest ally in the desert. Rolling cactuses. You know, they could be your downfall or your greatest success if you know what you're doing. So cactuses roll in the direction that they are hit from. So if you hit them from the right, they're going to roll to the right. 
Oh, my bad. I didn't see you there, man. Bitch, is you blind? You hit them from the left, they're going left. And for the worms, you don't need to juke them if you can just cactus them. I mean, literally, just ma master the cactuses. So, another thing. We all know about the dash. It's a classic. It's one of the best items you could have, basically allowing you to teleport horizontally. So, what if I told you there's a way to dash vertically? Well, sort of. The pogo stick. Let me introduce you. This bad boy lets you dodge bosses like it's nothing. I even use this on Duke Fishron. Like, this thing is good and is completely underrated. It's sold by the party girl for only 25 gold, so I highly recommend getting it if your movement sucks. Now I'm gonna teach you about one of the deadliest mobs in the game, the slime. I'm assuming 60 to 70% of you guys assume that the slime just jumps random heights or jumps the same height every time. That is not true. It has a specific order of jumps. They have two types, the long jump, and the short jump. And you can know exactly what jump they're about to do depending on what their last jump was and the buildup time it takes before their jump. The slime will always have two short jumps and then one long jump. As you can see, short jump, short jump. Now I know this will be a long jump so I can stand right here and he won't hit me. So if you know which jump they're gonna do, you know exactly where to stand. If they're doing a short jump, stand close. If they're doing a far jump, stand a little bit further. Close, close, further. Where are you going? You're lost. Got like your headset. So free. So you're in a public restroom. There you go. So the thing about slimes, which is very interesting, is they do not know how to stand on slopes. They just ride it down every time. Like, look, he can't. Now, in general, slopes are great. These things right here. When Terraria was made, the bosses were not made to be fought on slopes. They were made to be fought like on flat ground or flying around. So anytime you're fighting a boss on a slope, it doesn't really know how to get you. I learned this recently in my Magic Carpet video. If you want to check that out where I play as Aladdin. But yeah, here are just some clips. All right, so that is going to be it for now. A lot of the AI is like recycled over. So there's not really a point to cover every mob in the game. But I'm willing to do a part two of hard mode mobs if this video does well. But yeah, after learning these tactics, your movement should start looking more like this. And hopefully not this. Yeah, but anyways, thanks for watching. See ya. Fucking bitch.